Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Okay, so slightly new setup this week, but we have another great step-by-step, -step, super easy, simple painting tutorial for beginners this week. And I'm using four brushes today for this painting. So I have my standard uh, one inch wash brush. I have a medium sized pointed sable brush here. And then I'm gonna be using both of my baby brushes today, both of these small guys uh, that are kind of two different sizes. So one that's small, one that's very small because I do have a little bit of details uh, for the second part of the painting today. We are gonna be doing today's painting in two parts as we do many of our paintings. Uh, so this is just going to be the background layer for this first part of the class. Then we're gonna take a break, let it dry and come back and add our beautiful flowers and of course our gorgeous hummingbird. So the colors that I have out on my palette here are white, bright yellow, this is a phalo green, and an ultramarine blue. To see a full materials list with everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. It'll take you to a page on my website and show you everything that I recommend. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in with our background step. Gonna get my brushes in the water cup off the screen here. Okay, now this is totally customizable here, but um, what I was thinking kind of in my imagination was a uh, sort of like a backyard scene. So I'm going to start with a light yellow and this would be like the sun. So the sunlight coming through maybe some trees, but my idea here was like that soft effect that you get with uh, unfocusing your camera. So very, very much like just the suggestion of some backyard goodness we'll add in here. So I have just light yellow with white on that big brush and a little bit of water. Helps that paint go nice and smooth. I'm very, 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 very light yellow there. Just this little hint of gorgeous sunlight shining through. Now I'm going to work my way over to this corner right here with a gorgeous light blue. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse the yellow out of my brush. And I'm going to mix up a light blue now. And in the same way, I want it to be very, very, very light. Okay, mostly white. And just a little bit of that gorgeous light blue color in the corner and then working over towards that yellow. Then I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. Rather than blending the blue and the yellow together, I'm gonna to grab a little bit of white by itself and add that right in between. Very pretty. If you blend the blue into the yellow too much, you'll start to get green tones. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about how to blend different colors, check out my course on color theory. It's called Color Theory 101, and it's available on Udemy and Skillshare. But today we're going to try to not make green. <laughs> so that's why I took that white in there, not necessarily a green sky, but I am now going to add some green. So I'm gonna take some of this gorgeous phalo green color gonna mix it with a little bit of yellow and some white and I'm gonna take this beautiful grass green in this corner and maybe this is a bush maybe this is some grass whatever it is in your imagination and I'm just gonna take the vibrant color down into the corner but I'm thinking it's a little bit too bright so I'm gonna rinse my brush Add a little bit more light yellow right on top. That's what's so fun about acrylic painting is you get to layer the colors on top of one another. And then I'm getting that gorgeous minty green, love it. Okay, and then we just have one little corner space left 
and I'm gonna go ahead and make like a beautiful aquamarine bluish green for this corner here. Yeah, throwing a little bit more of that, my favorite teal color in there, which is that phthalo green. So pretty, really moving my brush all around the canvas. And you can even take just a damp brush with no color on it whatsoever. And since these colors are still wet, you can work with this paint almost like it's watercolor. I love to paint with watercolor as well. Acrylic is very versatile. So we're doing this first background layer in a sort of watercolor type way. And then we'll have that beautiful high contrast acrylic style hummingbird. And I think they just look really nice together. Very pretty. I'm just going to take a little bit more white in there. Making sure everything is nice and light and soft. Very nice. Okay, and then once you have your canvas all filled in with your pretty colors, we're going to go ahead and let this layer dry completely. And then when we come back, we'll add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. I have a dry background here and also fresh colors on my palette paper. I have red, two little dollops of white, some more phthalo green, yellow, and black. I also washed my brushes and got fresh water at break. Now, before we add our hummingbird, we're going to create our flowers so that our hummingbird has something to drink from. So let's go ahead and grab our medium-sized brush this guy right here, and we're going to mix up a light pink. So red and white together. Beautiful, love that color. And I want to have my bird pretty much as the center focal point. So I think my flower I'd like to have right about here so that his little bee can come over. It's not an exact science, but you do want to put some thought into how you're spacing everything out. And now I'm going to start laying some brush strokes, fanning out in many different directions here. So our flower is going to be sort of facing down. And then with that same brush, without rinsing, I'm going to go ahead and grab my white and add a few petals that are kind of white with a little bit of pink blended into them with that wet on wet blending technique. And then I'm going to have a few that are kind of coming off in that direction as well. And that looks like a beautiful flower opening up to me. Now I'm going to take that same brush, although I've rinsed it off, and I'm just going to grab some pink again and repeat that same process. Okay, loading up the pink on that medium sized brush. And then just laying the brush strokes fanning out. This is just going to be a little companion flower. Not the one that our bird is drinking from. Just laying the petals with each brush stroke like so. Very nice. And then grabbing some white and a few white petals as well. Coming up in all different directions. Nice. And I can hear the birds chirping outside my window, which includes hummingbirds, which were the inspiration for this painting. Now I'm going to grab that same white with pink and just kind of pull it down the top parts of each of my pink petals, getting a little bit of that wet on wet blending action. Very nice. Rinsing my brush, and now with a little bit of a darker pink, so just more red in there. I'm gonna go right in the center here, being again very deliberate with each brush stroke, and coming all different directions just to add a little bit of depth there into the center of the flowers. Okay, those are looking good. Now let's go ahead and create the stems. So same brush here, but I rinsed it. And now I'm going to mix up 
a grass green with yellow and green and a little bit of white. Very nice. And I'm just going to create kind of stems that come off of the side of the canvas that are curved lines like so. And one from the top there as well. Okay, and also a few leaves coming from that greenery here. I'm just going to be kind of pressing my brush stroke down and then tapering it off. A couple leaves right near the flower. Nice. Maybe that one goes behind. You can even peekaboo through like so. Nice. And how about just one coming from the corner? Just kind of making some interesting, beautiful things to look at in that corner as well, attracting our gorgeous hummingbird. Okay, now I'm going to grab my small brush, but not the very smallest. So this sort of uh, medium, small, small brush. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, kind of detailing work on here, but first let's go ahead and grab some green. And the last little element here of these flowers is a few little tendrils coming out from the center. And there'll be pollen on the ends of those. Nice. Rinsing my brush. And then I'm just going to add a little yellow bulb here. A little bit of pollen at the end of each of those. So pretty. Love those flowers. I'm going to take a little bit of white. You can kind of tap that in there too if you really want to get fancy and add another little element. Okay. I'm going to take some white, add it into my green. I'm going to mix up a light green. I'm going to sneak a little bit of yellow in there as well so that I get a little bit of a different tone. And then with my different brush here as well than what I created these with, I'm going to come in here with an additional brush stroke in each of those areas. Like so. Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and leave that area alone for now. We'll come back and add a few tiny little details later. Let's go ahead and work on our piece de la resistance, the most important part, of course, the hummingbird himself. So I recommend trying to sketch this shape out, whether it be with your brush uh, or even just a pencil and paper, if you would like beforehand, before you go for it. Okay, I'm going to go for it today because I've done this once before <laughs> uh, and I trust myself. But I'm going to take light green. You could be working with white or just water as well if you want to have a more easily adjustable shape. But we're just going to go with what I create today. So let's start with the head, uh, which I'm going to have the beak come right to that little pollen -y area of this flower. So his head is going to be right about there. So I'm going to start by doing a little circle like so. Okay. And then I'm going to create a sort of oval to start the body here. Nice. And then it's going to kind of turn into more of a triangle as I get further down like so, and even more tapered down there towards the end. Okay, and then that's the sort of head and body area. We're gonna have a tail that comes down from here, um, but for now let's do the wings first. I'm gonna come out here and create this first line for the front wing, about like so. So I'd say that comes out about as far as the bird is, tall or long, however you'd like to see that. 
and then we're going to have a wingspan that kind of comes down and meets the bird right about there but we're going to create those with individual brush strokes here in just a minute but for now we're just going to block out that little shape right there and then the same idea coming from the back area here to do a second wing and then here at the base we're going to do a sort of fanned out shape like so let's go ahead and fill in some of these shapes and we'll really start to see things come together so i'm going to take my light green and here in the body i'm going to sort of refine that shape a little bit and start to fill it in and I want to start filling it in down here at this kind of triangular part. But then as I get up towards the head, I'm going to grab some white. I'm going to do that white right in the middle of the sort of cheek area. And this is where things might get a little bit technical. We're doing a gradation here in a small space. So I know it's a little bit tricky here. But what we want to do is blend that white there in the center into the green doesn't need to be perfect and you can come back and adjust a little bit so if you get a little bit of a good gradation going like that you can come back with some white and kind of even it out like so and there's no such thing as perfection so once it looks pretty good I recommend kind of just stopping there with your little gradation okay that's looking pretty good now I'm going to take this green a little bit out onto this top wing as well but then i'm going to actually be mixing up a different green for some of these other spaces okay so that's what we have so far trust the process don't worry i'm going to take a little bit more green in here and i'm going to make a darker version so i've added just a tiny bit of black a little bit of black goes a long way and I've made this darker green and I'm going to come in here to the areas that are feathers. So that body was that light green, but these feathery areas are going to be this darker green. And you want to sort of lay the brush strokes deliberately in this sort of fan shape down here in the tail feather area. We'll kind of refine things all in a minute too, so don't worry if it's not looking exactly how you like. We'll have a few opportunities to come back into these shapes. Okay, that's about what we're going for right there. I'm going to take this slightly darker green into this back wing, like so, bringing it all the way in to reach the other shapes. nice okay very nice and then same way that we created our tail feathers here i'm going to start to lay some brush strokes like so and these are actually going to be brush strokes as well but going that way so every kind of direction of each brush stroke matters And this is really the trickiest part, in my opinion, here, to get them all going the right direction. So I'm kind of going with the shape here, creating a nice graceful wing, having it come in and meet the green there a little bit, starting to create that wing. Very nice. Now I'm going to grab a little bit more of sort of more of the light green that I was working with before. Like so, some light green again. And just make it so that the light green kind of walks its way down to the dark green in a number of different layers, okay? That's looking good. A little bit lighter, I think. So one step lighter. Right 
where the wing meets the body would be a little bit of a highlight like so okay just going to take that light green right along the top edge of that wing again just refining my shape and the more shades of green that you add the better really and then just taking those brush strokes down okay looking really good now let's go ahead and go into the face a little bit we're going to add a little bit of pink a little bit of water here always keeps the paint going nice and smooth. I'm gonna take that same kind of pink that we have in our flowers, so pretty. And just right here in the sort of front and cheek area, I'm gonna take some of that beautiful bright pink like so. And I'm gonna end up with a sort of triangular shape. Just sort of pull it into the green areas ever so delicately. And then you can even grab a little bit of white sort of on the outside edges here and lighten it slightly. Okay, you don't need to worry about it being too technical. Just getting some of that color on there. In the little face part. And just taking a little bit of a lighter pink. Right where his face is going to be, you actually want to be white. So I now have white kind of meeting the green over here, but sort of blending with the pink slightly. Nice. And I actually do kind of want a little bit of green along the top part as well. Like so. Okay, that's looking really good. I'd like to start adding some shadows now. I'm going to start with the beak. So let's do just black now. A little bit of water as always. And I think the beak is super important. So I'm going to come right from the sort of center part and just bring the beak straight out and it can kind of come into the flowers and then it's going to be a little bit thicker towards the face but this is a very very thin beak okay, and then we're going to kind of outline the front part of the shape here and I'm going to start taking my shadows around sort of all of those first lines again and taking my shadow now through the tail feathers right where they meet the body and then also along the outside edge I'm gonna do a little refinement of that shape like so and pull a few brush strokes in as well nice you can really see it starting to come together now i feel like this time my beak got a little bit too close to my flowers but that's okay because they you know put their beak all the way in there and suck up the delicious nectar so pretty okay and then i'm just going to outline the top part as well very delicate here and in fact use the smaller brush for these very small details whatever brush size you're comfortable with really okay well you don't want to bring the line all the way through there because this part of the wing is attached to the body here so i'm just going to bring it right along there and then up to meet the top part of the head and then just down ever so slightly like so. Okay, coming back and just refining things slightly wherever needed. OK, 
Okay, looking good. And now I'm gonna go along the outside of this wing with very delicate little lines, shadowing, refining. Can add a few brush strokes of a shadow kind of from right there in the center. And then this wing, you want to do the same thing that you did in the tail feathers. You're just doing very gentle little curved lines along the whole wing line. And you want to have a somewhat even wing. This is your chance to choose the shape that you want to keep. Because there can be a little bit of overlap of the color. It doesn't need to be all perfect and refined. Nice. And then from the top part here, just going to take that wing in like so. Looking good. Just going back over things and making sure that they are as clean as I can. Okay, a little bit of highlights now again with our sort of second to smallest brush. I'd like to take a little bit of a yellow green, light, light yellow green for some highlights right here on the tip of the tail feathers. Nice contrast there with the shadows. And just right along this top part of the wing as well. Really pops, I think. And we have a lot of different green tones that we've created now, which is the idea. I have a little bit of highlights even on the front part of their tummy. And a few, perhaps in this back wing as well. Okay, that's looking very pretty. Let's go ahead and add the eyes now and the legs of the hummingbird, which is the important, most important part. So I'm gonna do that with my tiny brush again. Very, very small one. And I'm gonna take just a little black circle in here for the eye. And I'm going to do some little legs. One leg is going to come out kind of a little bit from over there. And then one kind of right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And now with just a tiny bit of white right in that eye, you can add a little shine. And that looks really good as well. Okay, I'm just going to take a little bit of black with that tiny brush kind of into my flower shapes to kind of finish this design off. And this is just a little bit of shadow work, kind of very loosely outlining the shapes. You definitely don't want to do like a full outline because it's going to be a little bit too heavy. So just a little bit of shadow. Here and there, this is very much like sketching with our paintbrush, which is one of my favorite techniques in each one of these areas here. And I just think that really then kind of coordinates with the hummingbird. And again, that sort of high contrast acrylic way. And then we have our soft sort of watercolor looking background, so pretty. And right in the center there as well, accentuating our lines along the outside of each of these shapes. And on the outside of our petals. And our leaves. Okay, I'm going to take a little tiny bit of pink here and just bring that pink all the way to my beak just to sort of refine that shape slightly. And maybe a little bit more white here in the front part. That's entirely up to you as to whether or not your bird needs any adjustments. 
just softening things a tiny bit with some blending. Okay, just little tiny refinements that your painting may or may not need. Totally up to you. Very pretty. Okay, so if you were painting a lot today, I would love to see your art in the Art Club, which is a Facebook group that I made for my students to share their art, whether it be from painting along with me on the weekends or from your own studio. We would love to have you over there. Please let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comment section below. And that is all the instruction that I have for us this week. So until next time, stay creative.